start with the slide room. So the, it reminds you here uh, to level the trailer first yep. and bring down the stabilizer jack. Okay. And then uh, you can plug into power or the, your truck with the motor running. Mm -hmm. That just helps the juice with the battery situation. So after having done that, we're gonna bring it in so you can see here. Good kit. Okay, so hold the button until it stops on its own, and then it's sealed tight. So all these rooms have a watertight seal when they're in all the way or out all the way. So for any reason you come in here and you need to put the room out to get into the bathroom or the refrigerator, part way is fine as long as it's not pouring down raining. If it's raining, I advise you to put it all the way out. Okay. So, uh, just to make the room, right? Mm -hmm. Down the side wall, if you want to look back there, there's a rubber flapper against the back wall there. Oh yeah, okay. okay and we have that in the front here too, and on the top. And it's best uh, that you would spray that with silicone maybe two or three times a year. You want to keep it soft. So the, when the room's in, you can spray the inside part of it. When the room's out like this, you can go outside and do the other side of it. So that the sun doesn't dry it and stiffen it up. That's the whole idea. Okay. So the main idea with being level is in the rain, if you bring the room in and you're not sitting level, the rain that's on that roof up there might roll in on the floor. Oh yeah. Whichever way you're leaning. If it's level, then it goes out and down like it's supposed to, okay? The other button right here is your electric awning. Uh, we'll show you that when we do the outside part, okay? okay? That's this right here. Don't have a whole lot of room right here now anyway, but I can show you most of it. These are uh, two switches. When you come through the door, you can turn on the ones up here. And this will be the light strip out here underneath your awning, okay? Up here is the fresh water tank heater. So if it's below freezing and you're in here using it, I would keep that on. It is battery operated though, so it's best to have a generator running or plugged into power. And just again, if it's below freezing, fine. Otherwise, you don't need it. It's just for the fresh water tank. Uh, this is the monitor panel. It's got the buttons for your water heater, which is electric and propane. This is a 10 gallon water heater. So if you have electricity, you can heat your water with this switch. And when you're using the propane, you flip on the propane switch. Your fault light comes on right here. And when it does light, that fault light will go out and stay out until you run out if you run out of propane that light comes back on again so that's why it says fall can you hear it going okay so now if you're in a hurry you can turn them both on the other button here is your water pump for dry camping the pump is down here i'll be showing you that next and uh, there's another pump switch in the bathroom as well. So in case you're in there and you forgot to turn it on here. So above it is the buttons to test your battery. It's low, fair, good charge. And then as the battery weakens, it dimmed down accordingly, okay? Your fresh water tank is the next selection. That's a third full right now. Your black water is the toilet, it is empty. And the gray is the sinks and shower, okay? Yep. 
All right, so that's everything up there, and then I'm going to show you show you next before we go into the rest how to winterize it if you choose to. Um, you can start by looking down here. This is where your pump is. So this is access to the water pump and the back of the water heater. Mm -hmm. So in Washington during the winter, if you're not using your trailer, you want to maybe get all the water out. Yeah. And you can drain all the water outside. I'll be showing you that from outside. After you drain everything, then you can pull this hose out and put it in your gallon of antifreeze. Mm -hmm. And you're going to flip that handle right there, straight up. Yep. Before you turn on the pump, you want to bypass the water heater so that antifreeze doesn't go in the water heater. Yeah. And that's done right at the back of the water heater. There's two more valves. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. One at the top and bottom, okay? So after, after we've drained the water heater and the water lines mm -hmm. and the water tank, we can bypass the water heater, bring our hose out, flip the handle, turn the pump on, and go to the faucets and purge it through the system. And then, uh, you know, during the spring, you just put the water in and flush it out. But around, around Washington, most people just drain and blow it out blow the water lines out with air instead of putting antifreeze in the water lines. Yeah. And so you'd want to drain your water lines first. To do that, it's back here in the bathroom. Good. Hey, there's, a, there's a panel here, as you yep. can see. Mm -hmm. And down in there, there's two white valves. You open that down in the floor. Yep. And those are your low points water line drains. Gotcha. So you start by draining the water lines right there. Yeah. Okay? Open up open up all your faucets, you know, while you do that and that'll gravity including flushing the toilet mm -hmm. and the outside shower and gravity will drain the water lines onto the ground right through the floor here, okay? Okay. All right. You could drain your water heater right here in the winter. Just unscrew that and drain 10 gallons of water right here on the ground. There's an on-off switch here for people that like to override the electrical switch inside. You can turn it off right here when it's empty, just to be safe. And that's an anode rod too. So that's gonna get all corroded eventually and you'll have to throw it away and buy a new one. It actually eats up the minerals. The, the minerals eat it up, actually, and then saves the lining of the water heater. So, a couple of reset buttons here. Maybe uh, somebody turned it on while it was empty. It would sense that and pop these out and shut it off. So it's pretty fail safe. Next, we'll just go to the entertainment here, okay? Okay. So there's two remotes that come with, one with the television, one for the DVD player. Thank you. This is all I need. The other one's in there. Gotcha. So, right back here yeah. is the fuse to it. Oh, okay. That's how I know it's a battery-operated yeah, TV. Yeah. So be sure and have some of those on board. They're the same style as you just looked at, but one size smaller, okay? okay? See, this just, you pull this chain, that's how you unlock it, real simple. All right, and the top tilts too. Mm -hmm. Right now it's actually tilted down, but you can change that, loosen it and straighten it out if you want. What, what is this? Oh, okay, that's it goes one. in there. Okay, yeah, it gotcha, goes gotcha. in that hole when you okay. push it back. Okay, so I just wanted you to see that fuse. On the wall here, the green light is your antenna booster. So that has to be on if you're going to use the antenna. And you can turn it off like this yep. when you're hooked to cable. Some people carry satellite dishes and they hook them up outside. 
And then if you did that, you would pull your TV one off of here and put it up on the top one. Mm -hmm. So we have the booster on now. Turn on the TV. This is a battery operated TV. It's gonna work whether you're plugged into power or not, okay? HDMI is where you go when you watch a movie, okay? Mm -hmm. And then to watch regular TV, we just go up here to TV and hit the enter button. And this is right off your antenna. Of course, you'll have to auto scan it when you change locations by pushing the menu button and carrying this over to where it says channel. And this, that's where you can change it to cable if they have cable. Air means your antenna. You go down to auto scan and hit enter twice. Make sure your green light is on, and it'll pull in all the channels it can where you're sitting at the time. Okay. Which changes if you go different cities Definitely. and different things. So you usually so sit. So if I had a dish set up outside, where would it plug in? There's a spot for oh, okay. you. Yes, it says DSS outside. All right. I'll be showing you that, that as well. Jump ahead of you. No, that's fine. <laughs> you have cable and satellite connection outside. So we'll just let this do its thing for now. Okay. Talk about the stereo. This is, uh, of course, a CD player as well. And you have the speaker there, the black one, and one here. Mm -hmm. And then there's two outside under the I arm. I heard those earlier, yeah. And those are in the zones here. So let's turn this on. So zone one obviously is in here, and zone two is outside, okay? So this is AM, FM, or CDs, or DVDs. Mm -hmm. So you already got seven channels. Oh, yeah. oh okay, so that's a DVD player as well, okay. Absolutely, watching movies. So the oven here, you've got some slots for knives in the back, fan, a light, of course, a little screen up here to clean, a little grease screen. So the top has a sparker. So all you have to do is kind of like a barbecue, you just turn this to where it says light. Just always turn it clockwise. Doesn't matter where you stop. Here's the back one. And the other back one. Just give it a couple of clicks, okay? The oven itself, you have to light with a lighter. You have to light your pilot down below. It takes two hands to do this. Unless somebody's helping you. You go from off to where it says pilot and you push it all the way in like that. Okay, and hold it in. Light it down here. If you want to look, you'll see that blue flame down there. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, now we need to make sure we hold this in for about 10 seconds. Got to make, got to keep it going long enough to keep the flame on down there. Mm -hmm. And then we can let it go and turn it to on. Uh -huh. And there's your burner. Now, this is up high enough, so if you went and bought a broiler pan, you could broil on the bottom here the heat's above you this will stay where it's at and you've got a couple settings for your rack mm -hmm. so if you think you're going to reuse the oven throughout the course of the day you can leave the pilot on but we don't have to light it each time but if you're done with it and you're going to take off you best just turn it off yeah. saves propane that way anyway refrigerator is electric and propane 
kind of like your water heater. So it operates with the touch of a button here. Right now it is on. And it's in the auto mode. And it's working on propane. So you have three choices. You have propane. A for auto, which is electric or propane. And then just electric. Most people keep them on A for auto. Let me turn this off. The temperature here, that's the lowest setting, and that's the highest setting. You have, I think, five. Yeah. That does the freezer and the lower part. So when you're traveling, it's best to probably just put everything in here the day before you go, if you can, and turn it on and turn it up. Let it get cold, and in the morning you take off, just turn it off and travel, and it'll stay frozen and cold for about six hours that way. Um, otherwise, if it's on while you're traveling, it's best to pull over and turn it off before you pull into a gas station because of the flame that's back there, right? Okay. Okay, so the furnace operates right behind you. That's what operates the air conditioner as well. So when you're plugged into power, you can just go to cool, turn it down to 55, and set your fan speed on high or low. When we go over here to auto, high or low, mm -hmm. then we can set it at 65, 70, and have it cycle off and on. But when you're in the on side, it'll just continue to run. Yeah. Okay. So there's cool. And then there's fan only. So now we're just moving air. Good to use when the windows steam up, you know, in the fall and that type of thing. So all the air goes in these two vented spaces and comes out here and here. Or if these are off, you're going to push it out into these further. Oh, okay. Right, so you know, if we're let's turn this back on. We're sitting here. We can open this one up. Oh yeah. And turn it down that way. Okay. Okay. And I believe there's one in the bathroom. If not, it. it yep. Yeah, right there. there. Yeah. So these are your two filters up here. Okay, those last forever, so vacuum them out or take them out and clean them and pop them back up in. These are the only filters in the whole trailer, here and here. I think we'll just leave that on for a bit, but I will show you the furnace so you at least can hear it for a second. There's off, of course, and we have heat. Turn it up. Disregard this. This has nothing to do with the furnace. The furnace has one speed, and that's what you hear. So that's where... Correct. Or, yes, just for air conditioning. So behind you is the return. No filter there. Just air in, and then the heat comes out all these. Mm -hmm. There's one in the bedroom and the bathroom, too. Okay. So people with propane furnaces also like to carry electric space heaters to save propane. The furnace and the water heater are the two biggest consumers of propane. This doesn't take a whole lot. Yeah. Neither does this. The furnace does. So, you know, you always think about that. If you're plugged in, uh, why not break out your little space heater you bought? Set it down and heat the whole place with that. Save propane. So you have 14 gallons of propane. Most people average somewhere about a gallon a day. Maybe more in the winter. But by using a space heater that saves propane. Using the water heater on electric saves propane. So, you know, there's a few things you can do. Okay. So we're already starting to heat up, aren't yeah. we? Let's turn this back the other way. 
So when you turn off the furnace, it has to cycle off. It takes a couple minutes, mm -hmm. just so you know, okay? Down here's the power box. So this is also your your battery charger when you're plugged into power. Is this here? And then this will be where all the fuses are here and the breakers are right here. All, all all labeled right here on the back of the door, both sides. Okay? Perfect. All right, let's go in the bathroom and get that little room done here. Thank you. In here, there's your secondary pump switch. Yep. Maybe you've been sitting here and, gosh, you forgot to turn it on. Right there it is. The light. And this particular fan above us is four speeds. So when you turn it on, the lid will raise up and then you can change the speed here. Okay, that's high. You've also got the option of lifting the lid up or down without the fan on with these two buttons. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is porcelain toilet. There's one pedal, you're going to push it part way. Yep. And then all the way. Okay. Well, okay. So part way gives you the water. It okay. does, yep. yes. So at the beginning of your trip, some chemical. This is one style. There's actually several different styles of this chemical. This happens to be liquid. And, and of course, it is dangerous around children. Mm -hmm. So as if you were to use this particular, you, this is enough for about three tank loads. Pour about a third of this bottle down there, put it in there, and as you're using it, it's filling up, it's doing its job, so when you pull the handle, it all comes out, it smells good, it's liquefied. You're going to rinse your tank outside, then you're going to add another third bottle for the next time, mm -hmm. okay? Or you can buy the little pods they have now and drop them in. Much simpler, no measuring. I prefer the pods myself. Okay. But they do supply you with some yeah. chemical. So I'm going to go ahead and bring out the awning. This is a bad... Uh, way to explain an awning on video when it doesn't go out all the way. So when you bring it all the way out, uh, at the very end there's a valance that hangs down about this far. So that's when you stop, okay? If you keep going then the valance points up and the rain won't run off. It's all about the rain. So once you get it out there, if it's raining, I would suggest that you slope it towards the back yeah. because the door is towards the front. So you would do it back here by pushing in on this button yep. and tightening the knob, right? And that lowers it enough up there to have all the rain come off yeah, this end, this okay. right at this point, actually, right? I mean, if you don't slope it, then the rain would just come off the very end. But why not have it right here? Exactly. All right. <laughs> So it's so easy to use you guys put this thing away when you go to bed at night and put it away when you leave for the day to go do something Yeah. because of the wind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The rain is no biggie the wind is your enemy and I would also suggest that if you put it away when it was raining you open it when you get home and let it air dry that keeps this thing looking nice like it is. Okay? Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and bring it back in. You'll notice it's got a center support up there as well. So that helps the awning uh, as you're traveling. It keeps it from sagging okay. there in the center. Metal wrap here. That metal wrap protects it and that anchors it down in the center there. So the other thing to think about is when we turn our porch light on, it, may, it might even be brighter if you go like that a little bit, oh, yeah. to have it shine out, okay? Because it kind of covers it up a little bit. 
So the steps just fold up into themselves here. There isn't anything you have to unlock. Your door here has a deadbolt that you can operate from inside. Otherwise, your purple key locks the handle and the deadbolt. Okay, and then this will probably go like that with it, or you can go backwards for traveling. This is where you fill your water tank before you go on your trip. Stick the end of the hose in there, turn the pressure on about halfway, let it fill up. So she can be inside and say, hey, it's full, or you can just let it come back at you. It'll be full. Okay. This is nice. Yours is kind of centered over the axles. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing for taking all that weight off the front. But again, if you don't need it, I'll be showing you how to get rid of the water. Eight pounds per gallon. You don't, you don't need it, you get rid of it. The sewer hose you're gonna pull out of your bumper. This cap comes off. I usually use pliers because it's barbed on there. Pull it off, pull out your 20 foot hose and connect it right down here. Take the bayonet off. The black valve is here on the right, the gray valve is here on the left. Open and closed. Okay. Well, most people hook up the, the hose and they pull the toilet one first, and then they allow the gray water to kind of rinse the hose out as it's dumping before you stick it back in the bumper. Yeah. So black then gray. Yeah. Makes sense. And then if you're fortunate enough to rinse your black tank, after it's empty, you leave that valve open. That's a must. You connect your hose here and turn it on full blast. And it rinses that black tank out for you. So most places when you have to dump your tank, you're not going to find a hose to yeah. do this. So what you could do is utilize your outdoor shower buy a fitting that goes from half inch to three quarter, screw this onto the sandy flush, and use your onboard water to flush your black tank. Mm -hmm. There's a fitting that we sell for just a couple dollars that goes from half inch to three quarter. Now I can just take this off and set it here and turn on my pump after I've connected it. I might even have hot water and flush my black tank with hot water. <laughs> so, <clears throat> this is just something extra that they've done, not necessarily to do that, but you could, right? So this thing just wraps up here, rests on the bottom. The top one is your city water. I recommend a water pressure regulator in line with this, either here or at the faucet. It regulates the pressure down to 50 PSI going in. Yeah. Safer than not. Mm -hmm. So you don't need that pressure regulator here, but here is a good idea. And there's a light out here for you when you're dumping your tanks. This is where you can connect your solar, portable solar, ah. so that goes right straight to the battery. So buy a portable one, plug it in here, goes right straight to the battery, okay? That way you can point it at the sun all day too. Yeah. Makes a little more sense to me. Here, they give you a battery disconnect. That's this black switch here. Yeah. That would be when you're storing it during the winter. If you're not able to plug it into power while you're storing it, you can disconnect your batteries right there. Most people leave it on when they're plugged in and off if they're not plugged in. In the bathroom, there's a GFI that controls this outlet and all the outlets inside the trailer, okay? So if this doesn't work, go to the, the bathroom GFI. This is the satellite connection, and this is the cable TV. Mm -hmm. 
So here's your 30 foot of power cord. When you're plugged in, it lights up the blue light here as well on the other end. Blue light. Yep. So this is yours. When you pull into a campground, they're probably going to have this on a post for you. That's 30 amps, 110. Yep. If they don't have that, you're going to have your adapter that you pull out that goes down to 20 amps, which is just a little bit different connection. You might even have one here, yes. So maybe you could buy one of these from us. Mm -hmm. And this is 30 amps down to your standard household 20 amps. So this would be a must for you, okay? So all you have to do when you get this thing out is just uh, unthread it, give it a little twist and pull it off. The bottom one has an L shape to it. Yeah. Here as well on the bottom. Just line that thing up, push it in, give it a little twist to lock it on there and then you, if you'd like you can thread it on place. So we'll be putting this up in the front for you maybe get yourself a gunny sack or something for it specifically because yeah. a lot of times when you put it away it's not clean right it won't fly off and hit a brain yeah there's two handles they provide for you mm -hmm. the little guy is for the tongue jack if the batteries maybe the battery's dead or the fuse blows to the tongue jack you can hand crank it the other one is for the stabilizers. Mm -hmm. Those are just to keep the trailer from moving around. They're not levelers, they're stabilizers, okay? So if you need to level the trailer, you get leveling blocks and back the wheels up on it to level it this way. And then the front tongue jack would take care of your front to rear leveling, okay? Down here's your toy lock. So this cable pulls out quite a ways, allows you to bring this back into the frame and lock your bicycles or generator or barbecue or attached right back to the frame. So there's two small keys on your key ring for yep. this lock, okay? I saw that, okay. Up front here, the tongue jack is electric, up and down. The fuse for it is here. That's a glass 20 amp fuse, I believe. And again, if the fuse blows, batteries are dead, we can tap this off here and put our handle down in here and crank it. And they've also give you a little bubble level here too, okay? Kind of helps you level the trailer. We filled your tanks up for you. These are seven gallons each. There's two ways to use these tanks. I'm going to explain both ways. So this center knob has a pointing arrow on it, so you can point it towards the tank you want to use first, because mm -hmm. you can only use one at a time. So we turn this on, all the way open, turn this one on, we're only using the one we're pointing at, when it goes empty, this green turns red, and it automatically switches to the other bottle. So if you come out and you see red, you know you've started on the other bottle. One way of doing it is just to let it go from one to the other. Yeah. The other way of doing it is to shut off the one you're not pointed at. And let the first one go down, and then you can make that mental note of how many days it took to do that. Mm -hmm. Now you come and you open this up and you know, hey, I got X amount of days left. And in your case, it'd probably be about a week left. 